Hello again, everyone. It is Gordon Majak here, back with another episode of Timeless Pop, Rock, and Soul. Jumping the gun here a little bit. Back with part three of our tribute to uh, the incredible Tom Bell, who sadly passed away here just about eight or nine, ten days ago. Here we have the three OGs, folks. This is the Mighty Three. That's what they were called back there in the day, Mighty Three Music. That is left to right, Kenny Gamble, Leon Huff, and uh, the subject of our tribute today, our memorial for one of the all-timers. That is the great Tom Bell on the right there, one-third of the Philly Soul Foundation. There it is. And what an exquisite talent he was. What an incredible producer, songwriter, arranger. He sang on some of these records. He arranged so many iconic performances, uh, produced so many incredible albums, million selling songs one after the other with a style and a signature and a trademark that just uh, in terms of sophistication and complexity and beauty, just sheer musical beauty. Man, not many things can touch uh, the career of Tom Bell. Some of the work that this guy did. Here's the uh, most recent photo I have seen. Of him, this was from about five years ago, uh, from a newspaper article. The uh, local rag here, the Seattle Times, did a nice story on Tom Bell about five years ago. And as I said, he just uh, sadly passed here about a week or so ago at the age of 79. He would have been 80 in January. And what a life! What a career! What a spirit! What a presence in this world! Not just in the world of music, but when you create music that is so beautiful and so sweet and so perfect uh, that it transcends music itself and just becomes a part of life and a part of your heart and soul. Um, yeah, that's what this guy did. Just that. That was all. Yeah. Wow. Over and over and over and over. And we are going to hear another prime example uh, of the great Tom Bell. We are going back to May of 1975. Where's that album cover again? Here we go. The Spinners. Pick of the Litter. And this is such a great, uh, this song is such a great uh, example of so many of Tom Bell's talents all in one place at one time. And that is because, first of all, it's a great song. Um, from May of 1975, number one on the R&B chart, number five on the pop chart, produced uh, by Tom Bell, no doubt arranged by Tom Bell. Interesting thing about this song, there are five different lead vocals uh, on this song. All of the spinners uh, participate at various times, a line at the very least, uh, towards the lead vocal. But the main lead vocal provided by Bobby Smith and Purvis Jackson with a background vocal by Yvette Benton of the Sweethearts of Sigma. And the Sweethearts of Sigma, of course, the female backing group there in the Sigma Sound Studios which was the central location for the Sound of Philly back there in the early 70s. But uh, again, Tom Bell just says he had done with the OJs before them and with the stylistics and the Delphonics back in the day at the beginning of the Philly Soul Sound, just as he did with those artists, he comes around to the spinners and just runs off a string of uh, career-defining songs. And let me just once again give you a quick list here. They start off in 1972. Remember I'll Be Around by the Spinners? That's just a pure classic pop tune. How about Could It Be I'm Falling in Love? How about One of a Kind Love Affair? Ghetto Child, Mighty Love, Then Came You, that duet with uh, Dionne Warwick, The Rubber Band Man, that was in 1976, just one after the other, career-defining songs for the Spinners. And the Spinners, you know, uh, I mean, they were huge back in the day, and there is Tom Bell all over it with these guys putting that stamp, not only the Philly Soul stamp, but more importantly, the Tom Bell stamp with those arrangements and the production. So let's hear it from the spring of 1975. Here it is yet another, another side, another example of the genius of the great Tom Bell. Let's take another look at our brother here before we 
jump to the music here he is back there in the day that's probably from the 70s i would guess here is a later shot probably at a, an awards banquet where hopefully he was going to pick up an award or a hall of fame membership or something because god knows this brother deserves it he was in numerous hall of fames anyway songwriter hall of fame musicians hall of fame right and there he is more recently just five years ago the great tom bell from 1975, it is The Spinners and Games People Play. It's just an iconic sound. What an arrangement. Just 
Yet another reminder there with the spinners games people play. They just can't stop it from 1975. Yet another example of just these arrangements are so layered and so complex and the way the parts all weave together. I mean, if you just pick out uh, some of the various different instruments there in these Tom Bell productions, you just pick out the horn section and just listen to nothing but the brass chart. Just the brass charts are just off the chart genius. They're so well thought out and so well blended and so well designed. I mean, they're just beautiful. And then you move on to the strings and you listen to what the orchestra and the strings are playing and the way they weave in and out of the songs. It's just... It's like I said in the last video uh, or a couple videos ago there with the stylistics. This sound didn't exist until Tom Bell uh, invented it. I mean, he created this sound. Tom Bell and Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff. But Tom Bell as a writer in there, writing so many of these songs and arranging so many of these songs and producing these songs, just putting his signature all over this stuff. And I especially love the vocal arrangement on this one. And I think I read an interview with Tom Bell where he was referring to that uh, bass vocal section there in the middle where the spinners, uh, Purvis Jackson of the spinners gets his little moment to shine there. And Tom Bell was talking about how tra traditionally, of course, in vocal groups like the spinners, four or five man vocal groups, the bass singer, their job is to sort of hold down that low end of the harmony. And they uh, very rarely, if ever, uh, have an opportunity to sing a solo line because they're always on the bottom end of the harmony to fill out the group vocal sound. And that's just sort of a sacrifice that a bass singer makes to fit in with the overall group vocal sound. But uh, Tom Bell said, you know, knowing uh, how talented Purvis Jackson was and wanting to do something a little bit different and mix up the arrangement, not only does he bring in those cool female vocals there in the background with Yvette Benton of the uh, Sweet Arts of Sigma, she's got her little parts interspersed there, but putting that bass vocal sound right in the middle of the song, right in the middle of the vocal arrangement, and giving Purvis Jackson uh, a chance to show his stuff. It just added such a unique flavor, something that no one else would have thought of at the time, especially given how great the lead vocals of the spinners always are. But it's just another angle and another surprise and another flavor in the overall arrangement. And that is, after all, um, really when it comes down to it, just the absolute genius legacy that we are left with from the great Tom Bell. Arrangements and productions and songs and performances um, quite literally like none other that we have ever heard. The things that have this guy's name on them, the records that have this guy's name on them, uh, sound like no one else. No one else. That sound uh, is his sound. And um, he took that with him when he passed here just a very short time ago, about a week or so ago. Lived up here in Bellingham, Washington, not too far from me, the great Tom Bell. And as I said, one third of the mighty three, there they are, the originators, the inventors, the creators, the foundation of Philly Soul, Kenny Gamble, Leon Huff, and the great Tom Bell. Just a sound that for me back there uh, growing up in the 70s and I think by the time they got rolling, when Tom Bell was first starting out there with the stylistics, I would have been, what, 13, 14 years old. Man, that's my prime music years. And here comes Tom Bell with the stylistics and the spinners and the OJs and it's just all these incredible uh, hit songs and incredible albums and just such a signature, such a trademark of that complexity and that sophistication and just a whole nother level of beautiful, polished performances uh, there with the Philly Soul Sound. How about Tom Bell, huh? Wow. As you might imagine, we will be coming back to this guy so many times on this channel because he just put up so much incredible stuff. And I already named off all those artists and there's even more. I mean, there's just so much great stuff in the Philly Soul catalog and Tom Bell was uh, in the middle of so much of it. 
So we will be making reference to him again and again and again on this channel because, as I said, growing up there in the 70s and experiencing uh, this guy's work in real time, it was pretty obvious um, back there in the day, even with so much great music that was coming out, it was pretty obvious who was uh, sort of head and shoulders above the rest of the pop uh, R&B soul game. And man, those guys... Um, Kenny Gamble, Leon Huff, and this guy, Tom Bell, man, they set a standard that um, etched in history, and that's where it will stay because no one could ever touch that stuff. Absolute perfection on the musical side. Tom Bell, rest in peace, brother. Thank you for so much incredible music that we will continue to cherish uh, through the generations, a hundred years from now, this stuff is still going to sound incredible. I guarantee it. You drop the needle on the stylistics or the OJ's backstabbers or the spinners, a hundred years from now, people are going to still say, what the heck is that? That is perfect. Yep. Thank you, Tom Bell. God rest your soul, brother. Well done, my friend. Well done. See you guys. Oh, See you in the new year, right? Tch, completely forgot about that, thinking about Tom Bell all day today. See you in the new year, folks. Going to be a fun one. Can't wait. We're going to go hard in the 70s here. See you in the next one.